eyes. Says, Pastor, as we were praying just now, this was in one of the prayer meetings, I think it was the Wednesday one. As we were praying just now, I saw a big landscape in the spirit with many black, dark altars spread around the land landscape. There were many. As we prayed, it was like a dynamite was set at the base stroke foundation of all the small dark altars, and they started to explode one by one. The explosion was so powerful that some of the altars were actually uprooted from the foundations. The more we prayed, the higher the number of dark altars that exploded. The landscape was like carnage. It was scary, but in a good way, because I knew they were evil, demonic altars. Then I saw one big, white, beautiful, massive altar at the center of, that, of the landscape that stood standing amidst all the explosion. It was beautiful and angels were ascending and descending from it. I asked God, what is the big white altar? And he impressed on me that that is the altar on Friday. That is the big, white, beautiful altar. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Not beautiful to you? <laughs> I think you should thank God. So what message do I have? Isaiah, the 60th chapter, verses 1 to 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. I want to read that in the message. Get out of bed, Jerusalem. Wake up. Put your face in the sunlight. God's bright glory has risen for you. The whole earth is wrapped in darkness. All people sunk in deep darkness. But God rises on you. His sunrise glory breaks over you. Nations will come to your light. Kings to your sunburst brightness. Look up, look around, watch as they gather, gather, watch as they approach you. It's a simple message. You might call it a charge that I have. After a glorious night like Friday, with what we know has happened spiritually, with altars that have come down, Altars that we felt were entrapments in our lives, our families, in the church, the church in this land, in this city, and this nation, and what those altars represent, the constraint and restraint of the enemy, the obstacles that he placed in the paths of the children of God. I feel that the Lord's message to us this morning, Jesus' house, you're here in the base, you're at the hub, you're, what, you're worshiping online, is that it is time for us to arise. Can someone say amen to that? Amen. It is time for us to arise. Why don't you say that to the person next to you? It is time for you to arise. Go on, go on. can you say it to another person with boldness? It is time for you to arise. The message would put it in this way, in the way that the message speaks the most contemporary, contemporary expression out of the translations I know. Get out of bed. It's time for you to get out of bed. The message goes on to say, wake up. It's time for you to wake up. Will you say to that person, it is time for you to wake up. Please preach for me, preach for me. Say to another person, it is time for you to wake up. And when we talk about arising, what do we mean when we say arise? Well, we are, we are saying it's time to emerge. We are saying it's time to become apparent. We are saying it's time to come into being. We are saying it's time to begin to occur. 
It's time to exist. It's time to be stirred up. It's time to step out in faith. It's time to move. Whilst it's a, a prophetic scripture of the future, it's a scripture that aptly applies as the Lord says, arise. The Romans, the 8th chapter and the 19th verse. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits or eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. The world is desperate for Christ. Even if they don't know it, they are in need of Christ. And for that, for Christ to be shown to the world, then it's time for a group of people who have received a call to manifest themselves, to become, to be who they are destined to become. The Passion Translation of that scripture says, the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. I declare over your life that this is your season to be unveiled. Yeah. And so it's a challenge to us from God. Arise. Get up. It doesn't matter what knocked you down or knocked you back. It doesn't matter what the setback was. Frankly, it's irrelevant what the circumstances are. The word of God that went into the place of the dead and brought Lazarus to, back to life because our Lord and Savior said to him, come, is the same word that is spoken to someone this morning that says arise. And when that word is received by you, you are empowered to overcome the obstacles, overcome the circumstances, to break out of the constraint and to arise. So I declare over someone, arise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Emerge and become. Step out. And it says, arise, the Bible says, and shine. And what does it mean for us to shine? It means that we show Christ. The Bible says in Matthew 5 verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its flavor, how shall it then be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled on the foot by men. It goes on to say you are the light of the world. That's who we are, the light of the world. We, we marvel that he could choose people like you and I to be the light of the world. But his word says we are the light of the world. Don't believe the lie of the enemy. You are nothing but the light of the world. You are in there so that light can shine in there. You're in that family so that light can shine in there. You work you, you work. In that skyscraper so that when you walk in, light has come. When you enter the world is in you, making you the light of this world. So shine, my sister. Shine, my brother. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it on a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. So when he says we should arise and shine, people are constantly trying to find out, what's my purpose? Why am I here? And especially when I talk to a younger generation, it's, it's all about purpose. What am I doing here? Why am I doing? What am I here on this earth for? Well, the Bible says, let me tell you why you are here. Listen to why you're here. You're going to go to some seminar and pay some motivational speaker 1,200 pounds to tell you why you're here for free. I'm about to tell you why you're here. It says, you're here to be salt seasoning 
that brings out the God flavors of this earth. That's why you're here. Because without you, the earth would not have flavor for God. So why am I here? Why do I work in that office? Why do I work in the council? Why do I work in the NHS? I work there because God wants some flavor from that place. And so I am here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors in that place. It goes on to say, if you, if you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? Because don't forget the scriptures that we read at the start says there's darkness covers the earth and thick darkness the peoples. And we see the darkness. We hear the darkness. When you think that you, it cannot get worse, you then hear something and you're thinking, can this, is there something wrong here or have I lost it? I don't know how far it's true, but I read that about the whole debacle in a school because a child decided to identify as a cat. Now, 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 now. Now, that child needs help. Somebody has messed that child's head up. You are created in the image of God, not a cat. And there cannot be freedom to the extent that we say it's okay for you to identify as a cat. It, 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 something has gone dramatically wrong. And if we can't say something has gone wrong because we're afraid of being cancelled in this cancel culture, then we are not the salt and we're not the light. And the worst they can do is cancel us. But how many know that you can't cancel 12,000 people gathering on Friday night? When it becomes 25,000, you can't cancel it. When we feel Wembley, you can't cancel it. And when we start to exercise our votes, you better be careful what you're canceling because we will cancel you out of parliament. Amen. Up in the garbage. So people are wondering, why do I feel listless? Why do I feel... Become the CEO, but have a greater purpose than that. You're in your office knows you're a Christian. You sneak out to sneak in to church. But there's nothing about you that testifies about God. And of course, it's not that you're going to bash people's heads in a religious way. That's part of the problem with the religious church. But just living out Christ, just being gracious to people, being kind to people, being caring to people, being patient with people, holding back when provoked, that alone starts to draw people's attention. It says God is not a secret to be kept. He says we are going public with this as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I am putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Please say to the person next to you, shine. shine. Go, on, go on, please, can you help me and say, Go on, those of you in the hub especially, say to the person next to you, shine where he has put you. Shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. Shine. And in this day and age, shining is, is going to be countercultural. Oh, yes. 
Because the darkness is one culture. It's, 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 a, it's a clash of cultures. Kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And so you can't think I'm going to shine but not be countercultural. In a lot of ways, you will be countercultural. But we're called to shine. Of course, we're gracious. But we shine. Go and say, I'm ready to shine. I'm ready to shine. Go and say it like you mean it. I'm ready to shine. Say, I'm ready to arise. I'm ready to arise. That's God's word to us. Time to arise. Get up. Wake up. Don't look, at the, don't look at the obstacles. All these prayers that we prayed for one month, that obstacle has become a stepping stone. Amen. It's time to arise. It's time to shine. We need people to shine in all the mountains. We are thankful for some of our people who are shining in sports. They carry Christ. And the world has to acknowledge, because their skills are God-given, the world has to acknowledge that they carry Christ graciously. We want more people to shine in sports. I prayed for a young man from our French, our French Jesus House Francophonie. They brought him to me, and he's got a contract with one of, the, one of the clubs. I prayed for him that go there as an ambassador, shine for us, shine for the Lord. We need people to shine in every sphere. And our younger people, our millennials and our Gen Zs, we desperately need you to shine. So arise. Arise. That's the word from the Lord. Arise. Be stirred up. Go forward. In the name of Jesus. Go and give God a clap offering. Hallelujah. 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 And as we end, we want to worship God and just, just be thankful to the Look up at me for a second. second. When we look up at the moon on a, on, a, on a day where there's a full moon, how many know it's quite a stirring experience? Anybody ever experienced that? Yes? The rest of you never seen a moon? <laughs> Who are in here? Okay, all right. Um, and as, as much as the moon is shining so brightly, particularly reflecting the rays that are coming from the sun. Yeah? In the same way, we cannot shine without Christ. It's an exercise in futility. So it is Christ in us that makes us shine. The more we yield to him, firstly we receive him in, we yield to him, the more we shine. Amen? Amen. To try to shine without Christ, you will understand that darkness has power. The darkness will take the light of the world himself into our hearts. And then as we submit, at the hub, you're online and you haven't allowed the light himself into your heart. You haven't on a particular day, particular time welcomed him in accepting him as Lord of, Lord of your life. This is a wonderful chance to do so. So that you can go forth and shine. And so wherever you are in person here, or you're online, or at the hub. You want to accept that light, the light into your heart, Jesus, into your heart. With all heads bowed, would you slip your hands up if you're in person? Just slip it up. It's not to man, but it's to God. If you're at the hub, slip it up. Your pastors are there. Slip your hand up. You want to settle this once and for all. You want to accept him as Lord of your life. You want him to enable you in this season where we shine to shine. Slip it up wherever you are. I just need to see that there's a hand, there are hands up. I see that hand. God bless you. 
Go on. It's not on to man, it's on to God. Anybody else? Anybody in the hub, slip it up. The pastors there, see those hands. If you're online, the hosts are telling you what to do. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We glorify your name. We exalt you. We thank you, O oh God, for your children who are committing themselves to you. Father, receive them into your family, Heavenly Father. Receive them, O oh God, as they turn away, Father, from you. And quick confession, if you have your hand up or you're online, will you just make this simple confession after me? Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I come to you as I am. I give my life to you. I thank you for receiving me into your family. By this prayer, as I turn away from anything that is displeasing to you, I declare that I'm now a child of yours, born again today into your family. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Go on, appreciate, appreciate everyone who put up their hands. Um, we'd love you to, would love you to, if you're in person, we'd love to have a chat with you after the service. Uh, if you come forward, um, and if you're online, scan the QR code. If you're at the hub, scan the QR code, but pastors, Joseph and Kende would love to have a chat with you after the service, if you would go up to God. Go and rise to your feet as we say thank you to him. And then we're going to just worship him for a few minutes as we say thank you to him. As we do so, as is our custom, if you want to give a thanksgiving offering, we would encourage you to. Uh, we worship him in song. We worship him with our substance. Um, on the screen will come up the instructions for us to give a thanksgiving offering. I bless that offering in, in Jesus' name. I use this opportunity to pray for those who are going through a tough time financially. I pray that, that, that the God we serve, El Shaddai, will come into your circumstances in Jesus' name. I pray that he will make room for you, your Rehoboth. Amen. And every thanksgiving offering that's given, may God receive it uh, and may he bless it in Jesus' name. Let's spend a few minutes and just worship God as we say thank you.
Abraham is asked to pray for Abimelech and his family and all he's asked to do is pray to me that Abimelech may live and God took care of the details if there's anyone this is a moment standing under the sound of my voice online, in the church, physically, or at the hub in Greenwich, who is suffering any ailment, physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that the Bible says God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good and healing with the Holy Ghost and with power and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. The key was, for God was with him. God is here now. 
And therefore, wherever you are, whatever you're going through, in the name of Jesus Christ, and by virtue of the presence of Jehovah Rapha, healing comes to you. The Lord said, I'll deal with the details. And he's doing it for someone. We lift our voices and we say in simple faith, as Abraham said over Abimelech, live. 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 In Jesus' name. And everybody said? And everybody said? Ladies and gentlemen, we're wrapping up tonight.